It is the first snow of the year, and nine-year-old Jesse has spent a very long weekend indoors, having come down with an untimely cold. On Sunday night, as snow continues to fall outside the window, Jesse sits in the library, surrounded by her mother's books. Shakespeare's complete works lies open in her lap. All that glitters is not gold. Often have you heard that told. Many a man his life hath sold, but my outside to behold, gilded tombs do worms unfold. Jessie doesn't understand these words. She shakes her head as her mother rushes into the room. What do you think you're doing? Those are first edition books. Well, this one isn't. Stop! You know I have a publisher's deadline coming up. Why do you torment me? Besides, you need to rest. You have a cold. Jessie's mother takes the book from her and clutches it to her chest like a child. She doesn't see Jessie take an old book off her desk as Jessie leaves the library. Upstairs in her room, Jessie sits pouting on her bed while holding her stuffed stork Larry in her arms. Can you keep a secret, Larry? I got this book from Mom's desk. Look at this. There are things which no man can explain, like the fairy circle, that gateway to paradise. Now, look at the name written inside the cover. See? Jamie. This must have been her book. Don't you get it? I think I know where to find her. Jessie climbs off her bed. As she opens her door, she turns one last time to Larry. Of course I'm going. She's my sister. Goodbye, Larry. Outside, Jessie walks past snow-covered houses, where street lamps lining the sidewalk illuminate her path. She comes at last to a wooded area, where two oaks stand at the opening to the woods, their limbs entwined. Jessie reads a spell from the book. To the fairies, I bid you to open your home. Invite me in. A fairy circle slowly opens between the oaks. Its brilliance lights up the woods as Jessie steps forward into the new world. On the other side of the circle, Jessie finds herself in a sea of tall grass. Night has turned to brilliant day, and impossibly low clouds float mere feet overhead. It is warm, so Jessie discards her coat. Jessie approaches an odd green pole that disappears into a low-riding cloud. Is that a tree? Suddenly, the cloud floats away, and Jessie sees a giant grasshopper with huge folding legs. Jesse runs, but the grasshopper jumps after her. Just as it opens its jaws to swallow her whole, a roly-poly flies through the air and hits the grasshopper square in the face. Confused, the grasshopper leaps away. Jesse parts the tall grass and sees two storks playing golf with roly-polies. They look up from their game to stare at Jesse. Well, what do we have here, Arthur? It's a little human, laddie. I've never seen a grasshopper that big before. Leaper. What? Grass leaper. Something that big doesn't hop. Laddie looks over and sees Arthur teeing up with a millipede. That's not a good idea. The millipede unravels and swallows Arthur's leg whole. Arthur shakes his leg to get rid of the millipede but the creature refuses to unclench its jaws. Well, that'll be enough golf for now, won't it? Like a warm meal, lass? As long as I'm not the meal. <laughs> of course not. I'm a light human myself. Jessie sits at a long table with Laddie, Arthur, and other storks. A waiter hands Jessie a plate with what appears to be a burger. I thought you need weird stuff. Glad you like burgers. Ew! Jessie drops the burger on her plate as a grub slides out from between the bun. Suit yourself. How long will you be staying here? I don't think I can stay. I'm looking for my sister. Well, you've come to the right place. Our kind excels at finding missing people. For a price, of course. Nothing's free, eh? I... I don't have any money. Then how are you planning to pay for this meal? The table falls silent and whispers of, 
Freeloading human Freeloading are heard. Human. Freeloading human. I thought you invited me. Human. Like a friend. And I thought you might be different from the others. It seems we were both wrong. Well then, there's only one way to make this right. There is a rumble of thunder outside. Birds begin stirring nervously. Every bird for himself! What is it? What's wrong? A storm is coming. The worms will be here soon. You're scared of earthworms? Earth heavers! We'll deal with you later. Jesse follows the storks outside, where Laddie flies away. It starts raining, and the ground begins to shake. A 50-foot earth heaver bursts out of the ground, then another, then another, all over the city. They thrash around on the ground, destroying buildings and anything that gets in their way. Jesse runs, but the ground is turning to mud. She makes for the top of a hill, but an earth heaver comes up right under where she is standing. Jesse is knocked aside and falls unconscious. Jesse awakens to an insect's antenna a few feet from her face. A four-foot-tall ant stands in front of her. Get away! Why? Because you're a bug. You can't talk. I can't? Oh, wait. Yes, I can. Do you have a name? Anthony. But you can call me Aunt. Anthony holds out her sister's book. I think this is yours. Jamie. Ah! Jessie throws the book down in frustration. Poor Jamie. You should have taken better care of her. I was trying to find my sister but failed. And now this book is ruined so I can't even get home. Anthony picks up the book and looks it over. I've seen this symbol before. I can't remember where. Antio would know. Antio? She's my aunt. We're moving again. You can come if you want. Jessie joins a march of ants with Anthony. They enter the bustling ant city. Mounds of dirt rise up in the shape of skyscrapers. Ants are everywhere, carrying leaves and other kinds of food. Jessie shivers. Are you cold? You guys creep me out. Sorry. They enter a small mound of earth, where Antio sits reading three books, one with her eyes and two others with her antennae. She takes Jessie's book and scans it. No doubt about it. This came from the bowels of the Fairy Queen's palace. You're on your own. On your own for what? I'm looking for my sister. And I'm not going to the Fairy Queen's palace. Anthony Reginald Tobias Anderson. That is not the way ants work. We help those who need it. Dear, he'll be happy to show you the way. Thank you. But of course. What do you think we are, birds? You two better get going. Antio goes back to reading her three books as they leave the house. Outside, Jessie is confused. I thought ants worked all the time. Why is she always reading? She's retired. We take care of each other after a life of contributing. So why are you looking for your sister? She disappeared during a snowstorm a year ago, and we never found her. When I found this book, I figured it must be a clue, so I came here. Well, I'm sure the Fairy Queen will know what it all means. Jesse and Anthony walk through a dense forest. Why are you so scared of her? The Fairy Queen? I'm not scared of her. It's just... Well, fairies are mischievous. We prefer it when they keep to themselves. As if on cue, a fairy appears hovering in front of them. It seems surprised and delighted at the sight of a girl and an ant. You must be lost. We're not lost. We're trying to find someone. Anything lost in the forest can be found. So you'll help us? No! <laughs> Flying around them in circles, it sees the book. <gasps> Where did you get that? Thieving mortals always stealing what belongs to our good queen. Hey, I didn't steal it. The fairy tears the book from Jessie's grip and waves it tauntingly. I need that book to find Jamie! There is a flash of light from the book, causing the fairy to drop it in fright. The ground below Jessie's feet becomes a smooth stone path, leading to a door at an ivy-covered wall that hadn't been visible before. The fairy is whimpering 
and makes no effort to stop Jessie as she picks up the book again. You will be punished! Oh yes, you will be punished! The door opens, and they enter a long hall that ends in a barrier of ice. Suddenly, a loud voice fills the air, though the room appears empty. How dare you enter the Queen's Hall with an insect? A trapdoor opens beneath them. They fall down an incline and land at the bottom of a hill where a large boulder rests. The voice speaks again. If you wish to see me, you must pass one last test. Push this boulder up the hill and I will grant you a hearing. Jessie looks at the boulder doubtfully, but tries pushing it anyway. Anthony steps up to help her. No, you must do this alone. Jessie struggles, but the boulder does not move. I need help! Anthony jumps to Jessie's side, and the boulder begins to move up the hill. The voice is furious. Stop that! The insect must not help you! The hill begins to steepen, and even Anthony struggles. Finally, they reach the top and push the boulder through the open trap door. The boulder crashes through the mirrors. Jessie sees a throne up ahead, where a young woman sits dressed in robes of green and gold. As Jessie and Anthony walk closer, Jessie is shocked. The fairy queen is her sister. Jamie! Jamie smiles and holds out her arms, but Jessie is angry. What was all that for? The tests? Oh, sorry about that. I always do that when someone wants to see me. Those are my rules. I thought I had to rescue you, but instead you're living in a palace, as a queen. I didn't choose to come here, Jessie. This was simply my fate. But if you're a fairy queen, you can do whatever you want. You can come back home. No, I can never go back. You can have your old room. We left everything there. Here, I brought the book. We can use it to open the fairy circle again. You're not listening, Jessie. Here. Watch. Jamie whispers some strange words, and an image appears, floating before Jessie. Jessie sees herself lying in the snow, her mother holding her. Mom can't lose both of us like this. It's time for you to go home. Not without you. Fine. Then I'm staying here. I have friends. Anthony smiles as widely as an ant can, and Jamie looks surprised. An ant? Jessie, you know you're not ready for this realm. Jessie holds the book out to her sister. No, keep it. But hurry, in a few more minutes you won't be able to return. Jessie runs to her sister and hugs her tightly. This is the first time you've cried, isn't it? I won't tell anyone. It's okay to let go of me. Whenever you're ready, Jessie. I'm ready. Goodbye, little sister. Jessie closes her eyes as the world begins to spin and disappear. Anthony calls out to her, but he sounds very far away now. Jessie awakens in the hospital. Her mother is sitting beside her. Oh, sweetie. You're going to be fine. We brought you here just to keep an eye on you. Jessie looks over at the table beside her, where Jamie's book lies open. Jessie tries to explain. It wasn't my fault. It started raining, and I thought the birds were going to eat me. Shh, don't worry about the book. You're safe. That's all that matters. I couldn't lose you, too. I brought Larry. I know he's your favorite. You rest now, okay? Her mother leaves the room. Jessie holds Larry for a moment then drops him. She notices an ant crawling up the railing of her bed. She scoops it onto her finger and brings it up to her face. Thanks, aunt. <laughs>